My name is Oliver Schmidtke and I am the John Monet Chair at the University of Victoria teaching in the History and the Political Science Department. And I would like to contribute to the debate on contemporary forms of Orientalism from a distinctly social scientific perspective. And, you know, you could say, you know, how would you refer back to the seminal work that has been produced in, or in, in, the, in, or in the field of Orientalism, namely Said's 1978 book. And, you know, it has received very legitimate forms of criticism in terms of oversimplifying the dichotomy between the Orient and the Occident and what this means for our perspective also of the Orient, our way of studying this part of the world. Still, and yeah, that is the argument that I would like to put to you here, is to say that in a very strange way, and almost eerily uh, so, uh, Said's study on Orientalism still has to tell us a lot of things about current forms of discursive representation of the Orient and its impact it has on structuring the relationship between the West and the Oriental Islamic world both internationally but also in terms of the of how we treat uh, recent immigrants from the Muslim world in the Western context, in particular in the European one. So, um, to a certain extent, you could say what Said did, and, and this is what fascinates um, political scientists, social scientists, is to relate his study of the relationship between the Orient and the Occident to forms of power, um, of political interests that are driving public representations of the, the Orient and how it is being used for very distinct political and social purposes. And what Said did was to look primarily at the post-colonial fights against the justification of the occupation of, of the Arab world by Western powers. And you could, very justifiably so, argue, look, you know, that is very much a part of of past history and we live now in the 21st century and isn't this, you know, his study somewhat outdated. And indeed, if we look into where we are at in the 21st century in terms of how we in particular deal with, let's say, the Muslim minority with, within a way, an orient that has become a normal feature of contemporary European, also German life, public life, think about the presence of so many Muslims that have indeed become part of our public life. You know, you could argue that the norms of modern liberalism are far more accommodating. The human rights approach has established a paradigm in which, you know, the very crude form of, of stereotypically representing the Orient of forms of racism that Said refers to is no longer justified. On the other hand, however, and that's what we see recently in the European context, is a backlash against um, multiculturalism, the endorsement of cultural diversity, in a, you know, but in a very selected way. If you look at what, who is being targeted by the negative, also um, or stereotypical representation, it is primarily, primarily a, a form of Islam that is depicted in highly simplified and also negative terms. After 9-11, there is a new environment, a new political environment, in which these forms of the threatening um, form of Islam that is not compatible with Western civilization, you know, has flourished and has gained quite a presence in public discourse. And so what we could say, and that is where I would like to push this, is what Balibar calls a new form of differentiated racism, one that is no longer based on biological difference, but one that is based on cultural difference. The argument here that certain forms of culture and religious practice are incompatible with the West, that this provides a new justification for, for forms of social exclusion. And yeah, that is what we see. Uh, look at you know, what happens in England, in France, in Germany, immigrant communities that are so clearly discriminated against and exposed to forms of social exclusion. And I think that Orientalism gives us a very good analytical framework for coming to terms with this.